in this example, guys, is kind of important because this one does get some students mixed up. They realize they don't have a denominator here, and they're like, what should we do? Well, remember, guys, that's just going to represent as 1, right? So again, we're comparing. We're looking for our denominators. We see that um, 10 is going to represent our a squared because a squared is always larger than b squared for an ellipse. Since a is, uh, or sorry, so this is your a squared. That's your b squared. So you could say a squared equals 10, b squared equals 1. A equals square root to 10, b equals 1. And then let's go ahead and figure out c. So therefore, I could do a squared minus b squared equals c squared. 10 minus 1 equals c squared. 9 equals c squared. And 3 is equal to c. Right? Remember, guys, we're not doing the plus or minus because it's just the distance, right? So it's just absolute value distance. All right, so we know that a squared is under the y, so we know we're going to have a vertical major axis. We see that our center here is h and k. Remember, h is always with the x, k is always with the y. So let's go ahead and plot this. Uh, one, two, three, down one. All right, now a, that does not look the thing. So we're going to go up square root of 10, down square root of 10. Now again, where does square root of 10 lie? Well, the square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. So the square root of 10 is somewhere in between 3 and 4. Correct? Now let's just write down the vertices before we scratch them. So the vertices, again, we're going up and down. Here's the center. So we should be adding the square root of 10 to the x or the y coordinate if we want to go the, uh, the y coordinate, right? So therefore, this would be, so the center is 3 comma negative 1. So the vertices are going to be 3 comma negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 10. Now the foci is going to be c away. Now again, remember the foci are in the same direction as the vertices. So we're just going to add and subtract. Um, we're going to add and subtract 3 to there. However, I would not like you to, I'd like you to break that up. So negative 3 plus 1 or plus 3 is going to be 2. And negative 3 minus 1 is going to be negative 4. Follow? Yes? Now, we could plot those points since I asked you to sketch the graph. So um, 3, 2 would be 3 up 2. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's label these as the foci. And then the vertices, again, this is like 3 point something, right? <clears throat> um, so therefore, if I was going to do negative 1 minus 3 point something, that's going to be like 3 point um, minus 3. Hold on a second. Yeah, minus 4. Minus 4, yeah. So if you do 3 and some things, um, so negative 1 minus 3 and change, that's going to be like 4 and some change, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, be somewhere down there. And then basically you can see that this, um, if you're going to take negative 1 plus 3 and some change, that's going to be 2 and some change. So that'd be. 1, 2, and some change up there. So it'd be your vertice. Um, you can also take your value of b, which would be one unit to the left of your values, right? That's your co-vertices or minor vertices. So it'd look like that, very kind of skinny ellipse, right? Because remember, the distance from your center to your minor vertices or co-vertices is 1. So you're just going one unit over, because that's b, b distance from your center to your endpoints of your minor axis. And there you go. But that and that and that is what you would need.